Okay, Louisiana and New York, Ron Terrio, Jay Terrio, Louisiana Beer Reviews, today with Maria Devon from New York. Hello, Maria. Woohoo! Hi, Jay. How are you? I'm fine. I'm back from Mexico. Oh, uh, I know. I'm, take, I'm taking a break from Mexican beers to look at Stella Artois. You didn't want to tell us where you were going, but that's where you went, to Mexico. Me too. I have Stella Artois. Imagine that. Us both showing up here on a Thursday with the same beer. Yeah, by design, of course. Um, I bought this large 22.4-ounce bottle, and I think it was uh, $2 and something, two, mm, I don't know, something. It, it was wasn't too expensive. No, mine wasn't either. Mine is a 14.9 ounce can, and I got it in my bottle shop for exactly two bucks. So I was happy with that. Yeah, and I bought this at a gas station. It's very common these days, Stella Artois. Um, we'll do a little history. You want to give the history? Or I'll give the history. I have a bit of history. This brewery is pretty darn old. In fact, it was originally called the Den Horn Brewery and has been brewing since 1366. Then in 1708, Sebastian Artois became the head brewer and lent his name to the brewery. Stella, in the name Stella Artois, actually means star in Latin and this beer was named for one of their Christmas offerings that they did and they they stuck the name Stella on the label it stuck and they've been using it ever since since 1926 so it was it was really Artois star um, and it was a Christmas beer and it was so popular like you said it became just a, a regular beer for them and now it's their mainline beer yeah so this was originally designed to be a holiday or a festive celebration beer. Okay, so yeah, um, and we had in the Beatles they had Stella Ringo, right? <laughs> All right. Stella. <laughs> that reminds me of a streetcar named Desire. Stella, Stella Ringo. Ringo Starr, and yes, yeah, Stella. <laughs> Streetcar name is a, all right. So anyway, anyway, in 1366, they didn't even have a Belgium. They had the Holy Roman Empire, and Belgium was ruled by actually the Spanish Habsburgs for many years, and then the Austrian Habsburgs, and then Belgium became independent not even 200 years ago. But anyway, um, like they say on the Stella Artois website, we were in Belgium before they had a Belgium. <laughs> um, That's right. It's an awful long time ago. I don't think people realize how like immense the history of brewing is. I mean, it, it the history of brewing starts with the idea of civilization, and it's just kept going from there. So, the fact that some of these breweries that have that have stood the test of time and become part of our daily lives, part of our culture, um, have been around since like this one, 1366. That's just a long, long time. Yeah. Almost 700 years. And here's a glass, a Stella Artois glass that I have. This was given to me by the um, MBEV uh, distributor here in uh, our local area. They gave me two glasses. I was so appreciative of that. That's a nice one. I don't have a Stella glass, so I'm using my Oma Gang glass. It's very similar to yours. It's for Belgian styles. It's just an oversized tapered wine glass and Oma Gang is our regional Belgian contemporary Belgian style brewery so I thought that would be a good compliment for this beer yeah and Oma Gang is owned by Belgians they are they're owned by the company that uh, makes Duvel right so it's all connected well you ready to pop it open I am let's go I thought about getting the can, but the bottle was actually a little cheaper per ounce, I think. It was a little better value, so in my case. So anyway, it's got that beautiful paper shroud thing going. All right. Oh, I can smell it already. I can, too. It smells pretty darn good, if you ask me. Now, on the website, they show them tilting the glass. and then I, they let I like to tilt my glass, because look at all that head I poured. Yeah, and then they let the head build, and then they, they let it kind of almost overflow, and they slice it off with a knife. Well, I'm not about to slice off some of this beer. Exactly, that I... exactly. You know how to you know how to draw a beer. Good for you. Yeah, but I'm not slicing off any of it. I want to drink it all. <laughs> okay, um well, 
what do you think about the appearance? I think it's beautiful. It's pristine. It's very clear. It's got just a few bubbles making their way to the top. Um, not a stream or anything like that. Just just some lazy lager bubbles. It's golden. It's got a fat uh, head of soapy foam that looks like it's going to be persistent and have good retention and some lace. Yeah, and I'm uh, I see the same thing. Some lazy bubble streams, and I'm seeing some little particles in there. Are you? Let me let me look to the natural light, because if I look to the room light, and have you ever noticed that if you yeah. if you look to the room light, it's a little different. Yeah, for sure. And I'm I'm getting some little white particles. It yeah. looks like dust particles, but I know it's not dust because the glass was clean. There are those are those are proteins, I think, or or um, hop flakes. There's a whole bunch of different things that it could be. It could be. It could be yeast. It could be. It could be just you know protein haze or chill haze, or it could be um, you know hops that weren't filtered out exactly right. But yeah, you're right. There are there are tiny tiny. Now can you see this? This is an indication to me that this beer might be skunked because when I get these kind of uh, structures here in a beer bottle, it looks like um, like a, a a prism of glass. You see that formation there inside mm -hmm. the bottle? I do. It's, um, I've seen this in other clear bottle and green bottle beers, and that's telling me that the light might have affected it because it builds up this like structure. And um, let me see if the aroma is going to be skunked. You'll be able to tell if it is. It should be very pungent if it's skunked. No, no. Um, there was an initial whiff of something, but it's gone away, and now it just smells like lager beer. And this thing is good till September, so it's in the freshness realm. No, no skunk, no way. That's good, because I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's something that a lot of people have a hard time with. And if you are one of the folks that really despises that, that scent, because aroma is most of your tasting uh, that skunk, even though you can't actually taste skunk, it, like ruins a beer for some people, which is why I got the can, because I didn't want to deal with that. This is my first time with this beer, so I wanted as pristine an example as I could get. Yeah, that was smart. Well, what are you, what are you getting in the aroma? I got light grain. I want to say an almost grapey sweetness, like uh, like uh, white grape sweetness, but I, I'm not real sure, but it's grainy. It's light. It's got a bit of earthiness, and I would say that there's just a light little, light little hop floral on that. I'm not smelling the huge like when you think of Belgian beers, you think of the Belgian style beers, the the big yeasty, funky scents. This one doesn't have that. This one is just like your typical pale lager. Yeah, because those Belgian beers are those ales, and they. A lot of them have candy sugar added. This is only water, barley malt, hops, and yeast. And the hops are Saz hops, by the way. I thought I mentioned that. Yeah, and it's grassy a little bit. It, it smells lovely. It's grassy. It's it's light grains, you know, the barley malt. Um, I don't know about the grape, but maybe grass, like you're saying. Yeah, definitely like grassiness, which obviously it's not made with grass. But it's, it's really mellow. Um, this is I would a call it a deep sweetness. What I what I think is like a grapey scent. I would just call it like a deep, deep sweetness. Yeah, I thought I think I mentioned that it's a five percent alcohol beer. Oh yeah, we forgot to say. Um. Well, I think it's a really whether it's can or bottle, it's a really very well designed bottle and it's a pretty label in bottle design and can design, don't you think? I do, I think it's attractive. Red is is traditionally an attractive color, red and gold. Um, you can see how this beer was designed to be a celebration beer with the with the colors that they chose, red, white and gold and the, and the Christmas star there. I don't know if you can see it on yours but on my can you can see the Christmas star on the label. Yeah. It's just lovely. Classy, yeah. you know, sleek. Yeah, it's there. Um, I see the star. Well, um, you you give me the taste. 
Okay, well, I'm starting to get a little husk from the smell, and I think it smells really good. I think it smells crisp and dry also, so cheers. Cheers to you. Clink. Well, it, you know, isn't that nice? Yeah, it's just a bit of a bit of sweet grain on the palate. It's very dry. It's not bone dry, but it's dry enough to be dry. And the carbonation is outstanding. It has um, a really good carbonation that's that's like a signature bit of small bubbles that are that are enlivening the palate as you drink this. Putting all of that that light sweet grain all over your palate. The hops are vague in the flavor, you know, but they're there a bit, and they finish with a with a touch of bitter, so it has like a distinct little hop bitter in the finish, but it's not gigantic. It's nothing that's going to wreck your palate or anything. The grass is lightly over. The, the entire flavor just permeates the drink for a bit of depth. I like it. I think it's quite delicious. I like it, too, and um, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and repeat what you just said because I pretty much go along with what you're saying. You know us girls. If we talk first, we talk last, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying is I'm picking up the same things, and uh, the mouthfeel is light and watery, of course, and the finish is, I say this a million times, but, you know, lagers have that characteristic, crisp, clean, refreshing, and highly drinkable. It is. It's wonderfully clean, and I really like that. But this one has like a, a buoyant little lightness that's almost fruity. Like they've brought this this malt a little tiny bit more forward than your typical American adjunct lager. At least I think they have. And so there's a bit of some kind of, of malt presence on the on the palate. It it's thin, yes, but it's there. So I like that. I think it it lends to the mouthfeel. And it finishes so well. It has a nice, um, what you would want to call persistent finish. It's not, it's not a short finish, right? It lasts a bit with that little bit of bitter, that little bit of sweet grain, but it's wonderfully clean. No fruit at all. Yeah, it's it's just a straightforward, clean, well executed um, lager with moderate alcohol. You know, five percent. You drink this. If I drank this whole 22-ounce bottle right now, I'm not going to, but I'll feel it. Um, so it, in fact, in England, they thought it was too strong, and they were having some social problems with this beer because it was very popular in England. So uh, they, they lowered the alcohol over there. It's not even 5% over there, but up over here it's five. You know, it's the full 5%. Well, I don't think 5% is a strong beer at all. As a matter of fact, I like I'm in the category of persons who think that you know nine, ten percent is a strong beer, and five percent is you know baby steps, <laughs> or just uh, like a lager strength. Um, I think that what makes this beer is the powdery light dryness that it has. It, it its Belgian bearing is not so much in a funky yeast, but it's more in the body of the beer and in the mouthfeel of this beer. So you have this this uh, traditional lager lager flavor, right? This light grain, and, but then you have this Belgian style lightness, this this powdery little lightness in the drink, and I really like that. I think it's unique. Yeah, it is a light a lightness to it, and um, it's so drinkable. I mean, this thing here is drinkable to the max. I mean, there are no off aromas or flavors at all. There's nothing wanky or funky about it at all, I'm telling you. No. And funky is not necessarily an off flavor. It just depends on the style of beer you have. Yeah, but it would, it would, but it would be on a lager, right? Yeah, you, well, yeah, you don't want, like, yeasty funk on a, on a traditional lager beer, yeah, you if don't. I'm drink, if I'm drinking a Saison, fine, you know. Right, but, right. But, uh, you know, I was thinking this this thing would go well with hog head cheese and crackers, but I don't have any hog's head cheese. <laughs> but I have some crackers with butter. Let's see. Beer and cheese is one of the best and most natural pairings that there is. If you have practically any beer that you are going to have, you can put together with a meat and cheese platter 
with some with some nice crusty fresh bread and a few fruits, you know, and and just really enjoy yourself. And I think that's what people envision when they think of a Belgian beer. They think of something light, something dry, you know, that that is like a a, a beautiful experience to have with their with their casual finger foods. And I I certainly like beer uh, with a variety of cheeses. Yeah, I, I think it would go well with that. I also think this beer would go well with some French bread and some a, a shrimp po' boy. I don't know if you know what a po' boy is. No, what is that? They sell those in New Orleans. It's like a big sandwich on a French bread. And Ooh. A shrimp po' boy would have French bread sliced down the middle, and then they would put mayonnaise and some shredded lettuce and maybe two slices of tomato, and then a bunch of fried shrimp, maybe some more um, mayonnaise, and then they would kind of smash it down, and then you would eat it. Or they might make it with fried oysters, or they might even have a roast beef po' boy that you could get. But anyway, something like that. They call it a po' boy. I don't know why they use that term, really. There's some debate about it. But uh, I think it would go well with a shrimp po' boy. <laughs> I think you're right, and I think it would go well with uh, with seafood in general because it's so light, because it's dry, because it's crisp, and because it's neutral in character. And that's the other thing about lager beers, right, and pairing with food. For an IPA, for a Belgian strong dark ale, for a saison, for this or that beer, you have to you have to consider the flavors and the spices and everything else like that. With a with a neutral lager like this one, you are pretty much assured that no matter what you put it with, it's going to go. So I'm thinking fresh herbs would go well with this. Um, you know, fresh basil. I think tarragon would go well with this. So like barbecued or grilled chicken, grilled meats. Um, like you said, shrimp seafood is one of my favorite things also to have with beer. And I have a feeling that, that because of the of the flavor of this beer you might even be able to cook with it and that's that's something that can be tricky depending on the the level of bitterness in the beer but I think this would make an excellent beer that you could cook with yeah although it'd be a little expensive to, it's you know it's, it's not a cheap beer but um uh, but it would go well if you were really making a nice dinner um now beer advocate says this beer is okay great beer they hate it you know there's they do <laughs> they said it was okay, really? Good for them. <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean an average. Rape beer saying it's bad, you know. It's a bad beer, 17 out of 100. Lisa giving it a 17. I don't see what's bad about it, really, to tell you the truth. Um, if I was going to drink a lager, this would be one to pick. It's a lot different than Heineken. Some people say, oh, it is, is another Heineken. I don't see that it's another Heineken. No, Heineken is is a little bit sweeter and a bit less dry. This beer, uh, well, I, I think that, and I'm, I can't really speak for other people, but I think when you get a reaction like, okay, for any of the mass-produced lagers, I think you're doing well, because after a while, uh, to a lot of people, they start to taste very similar or taste all the same. Yeah. And, that can, and that can lower your opinion. Uh, over time, like you start out thinking, wow, this this one here is great, and by the time you get to your tenth one, and they all taste just very similar, you're thinking, well, now it's just okay. So I think maybe that's one reason. Why is it bad? Uh, 17 out of 100? That I don't get. Not at all. It on color alone. Okay, it's already a 50 out of 100 <laughs> just on appearance and scent. Right, we're already up to like 75 maybe out of 100. And and even if you hate the taste, what's to hate? Maybe the grass is turning a little bit bitter as it warms. Maybe the, the hops are showing a little bit more bitter um, in the finish as it warms. I don't know if that turns you off. I can see where those things would, in the taste and in the flavor, might might get you after a while. And we haven't had it sit out, so maybe, maybe if there's other off flavors that show themselves as it warms, that's where you get a lower score in taste. But as far as appearance, mouthfeel, and um, what's the other one? Aroma, it's wonderful for the style. Well, it is warming, and I think it's holding its own as it warms. It's not breaking down. It's not deteriorating as it warms. To me, it's almost even gaining some traction. 
I'm thinking maybe the grass gets a little bit more bitter as it warms. I don't know. I mean, it, it tastes fine to me. I actually like it. Wow. In fact, I like it better than than some of the ones that we've had, and I'm trying to think of what the sweeter ones were. As we've been making our way through these through these macro lagers, there have been some tremendously sweet ones, and then there have been other ones that don't evidence that sweetness and are a bit drier, and this is one of those. This is not that sweet and is nice and dry. I like it very much. Yeah. My problem with it, and I don't, ha I don't have a problem with it. I'm saying my problem with it, meaning it, meaning our long march through the beer brands. Here's my situation. Um, when something gets really bitter, it doesn't bother me because I like things that are really bitter, okay? So when something is really sweet, that's not a problem for me personally because um, I don't know how to say this. I kind of like extreme flavors and aromas because I drank so many beers over a month period that those kind of things don't really bother me. You know, they just kind of like pique my interest. So somebody might drink it once and say it was too sweet, but I would drink it and say, yeah, but to me that was sort of like a, a milestone not a milestone, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a, a marker, uh, what do you say, a, um, a landmark for the beer. So I don't necessarily take those things as a negative, but maybe I'm peculiar in that way. But um, No, I think you have individual taste preferences, and, and so everyone does. I mean, that's the reason why there's more than one brand of beer. If everyone had the same palate, there would only be one beer, and you wouldn't need any others. But for me, I, I find that the adjunct, the use of the corn specifically, tends to increase the sweetness to what I'm going to call soda strength sweetness, and I don't care for it. It's just too sweet, and it doesn't have it doesn't have the breadiness or the malt backing to to carry that sweetness, right? It's on this watery thin body, and that's why I don't like it because it seems to to just be on top of it. And yeah, I can go along. I, I I I can go along with that because that's the um the cheapness of it coming through, I guess you'd say. Um, well, but corn is sweet in and of itself, right? You bite right. Into, a, into a piece of corn on a cob, you're going to taste sweet. that exact same sweetness, just not multiplied into beer. Very sweet, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but I sweet. like the drier, the drier beers. I like the lagers that have a bit more of the malty presence. It, you know, it's like uh, I know that the that the Euro Pale Lager and that the American Pale Lager are not meant to be heavy or or bready in any way, and this one sure is not. But one of the reasons that I like this one is, and some of the ones that I do like is because of the way they finish. If they finish crisp, clean, with a bit of a carbonic bite, with some kind of good grain flavor, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy about it. Um, you definitely do get what you pay for. Um, this one, you're going to pay more for it, but yet you're getting more from it. Like we did a we did a review of, I'm looking over here across the desk at Bush. We did a review of Bush, and your complaint about it was that it, it was just too, uh, oh, I don't know, dull, and you wouldn't have it again. It didn't have enough flavor. Didn't have DMS? Didn't, didn't Bush have the cooked vegetable? A little bit of that, you know, yeah, and I don't so, like that. so this is half. This is half the price of that. Right. But that, when when you buy this, and I'm a fan of Bush. I'll, I'm not a big fan, but you know, but when you buy this for half the price, you're getting half the. Let's be honest, you're getting half the quality. But I mean, you know, I like to look at these things in context, you know. But, uh, it's, not, it's not anything. It's not news, right? What you're saying, because yeah, it's true, and and it's a shame that it has to be that way. But it does cost more to make a better product, and and you know, like how much is is reasonable for uh, a beer of this quality? I think that what I paid for this beer was perfectly reasonable. One serving of beer, basically almost a pint, two bucks. That's very reasonable. Right, and it's kind of like if I said, well, Maria, if you bought a purse at Neiman Marcus, it would be a better purse than if you bought one at Sears. But that's like kind of stating the obvious, right? 
Well, that's a little bit different because Neiman Marcus, um, they sell all that trendy and, and branded stuff. That's a horse of a different color, right? And you find that kind of attitude in beer, right? You find chic and trendy breweries, hot tickets, um, uh, you know, right. labels that attract people and, and add to the mystique of a beer. And then you have the beer and you think, well, I've had other beer that's just as good or better and it didn't didn't cost that okay. much. Let me, let me use a different analogy, okay? Yeah, because I, I bought my purse at Kmart 10 bucks. It's lasted me 15 years. <laughs> okay, let's say you bought a purse at Kmart as opposed to buying one at um, Macy's. Bush would be Kmart and Stella Artois would be Macy's. It's not Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus would be... Um, uh, let's think of a lager that. As far as lager beers, yeah, Jack's Abbey would be would be um, Saks Fifth Avenue, and Stella Artois would be uh, Coles, and Bush would be uh, Woolworth, and um, I'm trying to think of one in between Jack's Abbey. No, let's put Jack's Abbey at Macy's and call the actual Germans like uh, Uriga. We'll call those Saks Fifth Avenue. We'll call the German, the real traditional German beers from Germany. We'll call those the, the Sachs Goldman. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I guess You're all of them. You're as good a shopper as me, Jay. You have, to, <laughs> you have to know your pricey department stores. I'm not a big shopper, unless it's for beer. You know, I'm trying to, like, you know what I mean? But you understand what I'm trying to say, right? I do. I do. And and Macy's, I'll tell you what, is it, a lot of people think of it as a pricier store. It is. It has a lot of designer brands. But, like, Saks and Macy's, Macy's is at the top of the ladder, and Saks is way up top in the penthouse. <laughs> right. So, you know, Stella Artois, we're not – we are not saying – I don't want the audience to sit, to think that we are saying Stella Artois is an expensive beer. We are not saying that by any stretch of the imagination. We're just saying it's not a value price beer. You know, that's all we're saying. No, it's not. No. If you buy a four-pack, and that's the other thing, right? As you go into your more expensive, your more expensive offerings, you'll find that a six-pack and a four-pack, like, it, they, they sort of translate at that, at that level where you're going from the Woolworth to the Macy's or to the Coles from six pack beers to four pack beers. So you were getting a six pack for seven ninety nine. Now you're only getting a four pack and it's eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine. And then when you get really, really expensive, now you're talking about the bombers. And and the beer doesn't even come in twelve ounce bottles. It only comes in a bomber. And right. those are terribly expensive. Right. And so um, you know, if people are gonna go fishing I don't know how many guys going fishing going to go get Stella Artois. They're probably going to go get the bush, right? Because they're not going to even yeah, think about it. They're just Martin boat beer or Narragansett lager or something. You know, something you can pound all day while you're sitting in a boat and know that you're not going to wreck your stomach, wreck your, you know, wreck your head for, for getting to and from shore or, or catching any fish. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to go and, and get like a 10% triple IPA to go fishing. You're going to get Genesee Lager, 99 cents for a tall boy to go fishing. Right. And if you were going to a dinner party, uh, like you and a date were going to a dinner party at a couple's apartment, you might bring a couple of bottles of Stella Artois, right? Sure. Absolutely. You would want to bring something, something a little bit more upscale as a gift to someone who's invited you to dinner. Absolutely. So anyway, I think we um, – pretty much covered the bases on this and you I'm gonna let you give your opinion of the beer first we're not doing a rating we're not like doing a review we're just doing an examination of it you you know what I mean when I say examination we're just like looking at it right but your overall impression of like if we were sitting at the bar together right you and me we we just bellied up to the bar both of us together at the same time happen to order the same beer and just shooting a breeze about it I like it my my overall impression is that it's it's better than good. It's not very good, but it's better than good. So it's approaching very good. Um, I'd say as far as the macro lagers that we tried, it's one of the more pleasant ones. And the reason is because it's dry, because it finishes so well, and because it's not terribly sweet and offers a touch more malt presence than 
the usual AAL. I think this is a good choice if you are trying to impress someone. If, if you're trying to say, you know, I, I cared enough to buy a better beer, this is a good one. And it won't break your wallet. Um, I think it drinks really well. I like it very much. And like Tom Beer Whisperer says in his examinations, he says, he, he doesn't do reviews, but he'll say it's a buy again or not a buy again. You would put it under the buy again? Yes, I would. And it's so hard to translate personal ratings. And I found that because I started with one rating system, tried to switch to another one, and now I'm just doing good, very good, outstanding, and like that. Because it, it doesn't make sense to another person, right? If you're not going to actually sit down and read the, the individual categories and, and how they were scored, then a score doesn't really mean anything to you. But hearing someone say, yeah, that was, that was good or that was very good, that has meaning to you. Everyone knows what good is. Everyone knows what very good is. Yeah, and that's the rating system. I've always used um, my rating system, you know, is, uh, you know, undrinkable, poor, below average, average, above average, good, very good, excellent, most excellent, outstanding, and world class. So I would say this to me, for beer overall, it would be at least a B plus, very good. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking B, B plus. And for a lager beer, it might even, you're probably getting into the excellent range for a lager beer. For its style. It is excellent. Yeah, for its style, um, I, there are probably lager beers that are as good as it, but I don't know if there's necessarily lager beers that are better than it. I try to give, always try to give these beers the benefit of the doubt because it's just me and who am I? I'm not some great authority on anything, but I think it can go toe to toe with any other mass-produced lager beers. I think that that the place where style matters is when you're trying to compare things. Like it's it's a lot of fun and it's very convenient to say that style has no meaning and as long as you like it, it's good. And that's true. Fundamentally, that's true. But when you're trying to make comparisons, you can't compare a Euro Pale Lager to a Dunkel. You can't compare right a, a Golden Hellas Lager to a Doppelbach, you just can't. It's not, it, they're not the same thing. They're not the same animal. So in its class, I'd say this is a fine beer. Uh, you know what I mean? Better than, better than good. Definitely approaching excellent. There's no reason to try and take it out of its class, right, and apply it to beer as an entirety and say, oh, well, it only scores 17 out of 100. How's that fair? You're comparing it to stouts, to IPAs, to DIPAs, to barley wines, to, to all kinds of things, to triples, to Belgians, to this, to that. This beer uh, is what it is because yeah. uh, that's what it is. Right. It doesn't make any sense to do what you're talking about because um, there's no sense to it. Um, it's like comparing um, gun smoke to uh, Citizen Kane. Yeah, apples and oranges, and I think that's the other flaw in the in the idea of, of public ratings. It's not that it's a bad idea to have a public-fueled database with, with people's ratings in it. I think that's a tremendous idea. But you often come across the, the disparity between the idea that, well, this beer is great, and yet people are calling it horrific. It's not horrific at all. Right, and uh, to sum this up, we like it. It's good. We would recommend people go and buy it. You'll almost certainly like it unless you just have this built-in animus towards the style, which we don't. We can't grasp that concept anyway. But um, I'm speaking for Maria, but I think she agrees with me. We don't grasp the concept of having a built-in animus. As far as likes and dislikes, though, it's like what makes you like Pepsi instead of Coke? Some people may like Stella. And some people may not, but as long as you are as long as you are not expecting it to be something that it isn't, I think you will come up with a very fair assessment. Right, and, and I didn't I didn't, I didn't I didn't guarantee that people would like it. I said they would more than likely enjoy it. I think most people would like it. As a matter of fact, I think most people do like it because this is extremely popular. This moves. 
I, I didn't find any stale Stellas on the no. shelf. No. But, you know, when I go beer shopping, you know me, I'm looking for craft beer, so I'm checking dates and I'm looking at everything, and, and there was no out-of-code Stella Artois on the shelf when I went shopping. Everything was moving fast. There shouldn't be. And I'm going to show you one more thing before we close out. And if we're talking about bad beer, I'm going to show you something that. <laughs> you have a collection of bad beer in there. I know you do. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about bad. You want to talk about bad? If somebody would tell me, well, you know, Stella Artois is bad, I would say, no, you don't understand the concept of bad. I would say, you want to try bad, try this. Oh, high gravity lagers. Yeah, those are those are definitely hard to hard to get used to. Earthquake high gravity lager, ten percent. Now I was stunned when I saw this in the store because the only ones I've ever seen are the twelve percent, and then later on I saw the eight percent. But I saw this ten percent in Brownsville, Me uh, Texas, and I said, oh, I have to buy. You know, it's like everything in your fiber is saying don't buy it, right? But you know me, I had to buy it, right? So, but here's bad. You want to know, this is exquisitely bad. You know what I mean? It like, it, it's the gold standard of horror. But um, yeah. so that's bad. But that, I'm going to review it, and I'm sure it's going to deserve all the horrible attributes <laughs> that is assigned to it. But anyway. Um, the know, other thing is, and, and I, I know that people have common sense. Some people do anyway. The other thing is you can't possibly expect every single offering from every single brewery to be stellar and to be 100% yeah. wonderful. And yeah. when you come across a brewery that receives just like all high ratings, it is like the, the hot ticket in breweries, then it's time to really take a look at those beers and say, well, what's so special about these? And it doesn't surprise me at all if – you know, like, does does this company make other beer besides Stella, Stella and Cedar? Yeah, they, make they the do. Cider, but they make this, and that's it, right? Hmm. They don't you make mean, anything else. Wait, you mean... Well, wait, InBev, they're owned by InBev, so they make f hundreds and hundreds of beers. No, no, I mean Stella Artois. They make Cider, something called Cidre, C-I-D-R-E, and they make this beer... And they do them both really well. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't have 10, 15 different beers to allow you to be disappointed in one or in two and think that the others are great. They only make this one, and they do it fine. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about that. I can't answer that question because I don't know. It's, it's my ignorance. But um, I don't know either. I'm only guessing because I've never seen any other beer with this, with this name on it. No, neither me. I have not either. Um, but it's anyway... Good. L e u v e n. That that would be the brewery. Yeah, Louvain, Belgium. Um, well, I like it. And if somebody said, "Would you like to drink a Stella Artois?" the answer would be, "Most certainly, I would." Yeah, and you don't have to be afraid of like going places, right? When you when you are become like a beer enthusiast, you'll find a topic on Threads that's like, what do I do if I go to a picnic and all they have is Budweiser? Well, you know, you either drink the Budweiser or you don't and you be quiet. It's not that big a dilemma. If you at least try and um, and try all the beer, you'll find that you like more than you think. And, and that opens up your choices so that when yes. you go to like Buffalo Wild Wings and they don't have Jack's Abbey on tap, but they do have this. You can have this. Yes, I like what you said. Most of what I try, I, at the minimum, like it. It's becoming harder for me to find bad beer than good beer, which to me is a good state of affairs, okay? I like the fact yeah, that most beers I, I try are... I bad beer, and I'll tell you what, this one isn't one of them. <laughs> it really isn't. No, it's a nice, it's a nice beer. Simple as that. So anything else? Because I guess we're going on and boring the world. Let's not bore the world. So, all right. Well, thank you for watching this video production and putting up with our long, drawn-out uh, talk. Oh, chit-chat. And, okay. and it's not long and drawn-out. It's just chit-chat. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 
all right thank you world